Today I'll be introducing you to a, a parallel refining testing unit from ILS. Um, we've had the pleasure of making these units the last years for a number of international companies like Porocell, Repsol, Nesti Oil in Finland, as well as the H&R refineries in, uh, in Germany. From everything from very heavy feedstocks like bitumen up to lighter feedstocks like straight run gas oils. Uh, we've seen a renewed interest in these types of units, uh, primarily as a result of the Tier 3 uh, introduction of gasoline in the U.S., really pushing refiners to uh, lower the sulfur levels without compromising um, octane on their fuels, as well as for more unconventional applications, like for hydrotreating oils from pyrolysis oils uh, being produced uh, from circular economy applications where things like used plastics are being converted to fuel oils. Um, this unit is quite a particular unit and it's uh, got two different fixed bed reactors placed in a single oven. It's a multi-zone oven where we operate in a cascaded control. Um, this design has the advantage of ensuring exactly the same external temperature profiles for both ovens. Um, this way we can get a really nice back-to-back -back comparison of catalysts. Um, hydrogen is fed with high pressure uh, mass flow controllers from uh, Bronkhorst. And we're working with the Brunkhorst Mini Coriolis Flow technology here as well, which gives us extremely sensitive mass flow measurement at very low flow rates. Uh, main limitation is that we're limited to about 70 degrees Celsius for heat tracing. Um, that limits the types of feedstocks we can add here. So we're looking here at everything from light feedstocks like uh, straight ring gas oils to light G, uh, uh, VGOs. Um, we've got the feedstock vessels here, um, which are weighed. Uh, which is important for closing the mass balance. And we also have an external vessel here for um, dosing a DMDS spiked feedstock for pre-sulfiding our catalysts. Clients like Poral Cell and Repsol have uh, done back-to-back -back comparisons with these units and they typically get um, weight average bed temperatures of roughly one degrees uh, in terms of temperature deviation at uh, ISO conversion levels of 10 ppm sulfur, which is uh, really quite challenging, but easy to meet here. Here you can typically work with anything in the range of five to 50 grams of catalyst. I'll be showing you the backside of the unit, which shows the downstream section in just a second. Here I'll be focusing on the downstream part of the uh, parallel hydro treater. We choose to place most of our components in uh, custom-made heated oven enclosures. We do this because it makes ex accessibility and any uh, maintenance work, leak testing, etc., much easier than we're working with uh, heat tracing and insulation. This can easily be opened. Um, once we open it, you see we can access uh, all of the components inside. We have the various back pressure controllers for the reactors. These are the strippers for removing any H2S at the end to ensure we don't get any uh, recombination after reaction. And we can take up to 20 samples here online, as you see. So we have 20 vials here or 20 bottles at the bottom, which we can use for offline um, liquid sampling at the end of the run. These are taken fully automated. Mm, on the other side of the unit then, we can also collect um, any product which we don't sample in a slop vessel. Uh, the slop tank here is placed on a balance. The other two tanks to the left here are the feed tanks. So we weigh the feed tanks. We also weigh the product vessels here. Um, and that in combination with the Coriolis mass flow meters really ensures we get a very tight mass balance on the liquids. The gas phase components are measured with an online RGA analyzer here. So we have a high temperature gas analysis with the GC. And uh, last but not least, we also have the volumetric um, gas measurement meters here. So we can measure the volumetric flow coming out of the reactor, as well as the volume percent of various components in the gas phase. All of this together ensures that we get a closed mass balance with roughly plus or minus 1% in total.